today we're going to be talking about addressing frequently asked questions, FAQs, when it comes to penile implants, and we have just the right person to cover these frequently asked questions for us today. Joining us is Dr. Richard Natale from Carolina Urology Partners. He's a men's health specialist and a urologist. Can you just let first-time listeners know who you are and why you got into men's health and what you can tell us a little bit about why you're so passionate about this field. You got it. Well, uh, Richard Natale, it's nice to meet everybody. Um, I'm originally from California, born and raised, uh, moved my way out east, um, did my training at the University of Florida in Gainesville, um, graduated in 2009 and moved immediately to this area on the tip of one of my wife's faculty, as a matter of fact, who said we probably love the Charlotte area. And you know what? It's been 12 years and counting and we love it here. This is our home and, and uh, we've raised our family and grown nice deep roots here. As a urologist, you know, most of us have, have good senses of humor and that's kind of what drew me into the field is the, the jokes that we can tell and the, and the kind of levity that we have as, as physicians, even though we take our job seriously, we're still known as the, as the fun guys. So that was definitely one of the attractions to urology. And then of course, in that field of which there's all different types of, of subspecialties, uh, the neat thing about men's health is twofold. One is that uh, now I get to tell penis jokes, and, and, and it's an okay, and it's funny. Um, but also, more importantly, is I get to help my guys who who run into troubles with, you know, those things like being able to make love to their spouse, or or urinary troubles, or testosterone issues, and I get to work with those guys uh, in solving that problem um, and managing other issues, all the uh, all the rest. So really attracted to that, to the field of men's health. Um, and then listen, being a men's health advocate, being a person who really kind of passionately fights for the issues that, that affect us in particular. Um, that's, that's all a why, I, why I do what I do. All right. That is a great introduction for folks who might not know about you. And now we're going to move on to addressing these frequently asked questions about penile implants. First of all, can you remind us what a penile implant is and some of its benefits? There are uh, different types of implants, but the most commonly placed is what's called a three-piece prosthesis, a, a mechanical hydraulic pump. Uh, it has a reservoir of fluid that's located in the lower abdominal pelvic area, a kind of pump system that goes right underneath the skin of the, of the scrotum, and then two cylindrical, um, almost like balloons that go inside the penis itself. Fluid is drawn from that reservoir site into the and placed into the cylinders. The cylinders inflate and become rigid. That would give us our erection. And then the device is deflated, um, returning it back to the normal state. Now, I'll tell you that what I like about penile implants, and I'll hear this not infrequently, people say, oh, I don't know if I want something like that. It's not natural. And while we can't restore you back to where you were before, gosh, I wish we could, what implants offer is the closest thing that we can get to being as natural as we can be. Why? Because it's a reliable thing and it's going to get wrecked when you need it. It is rigid enough to do the job and it will stay that way. Um, so there's a good durability to it. We can get the same type of erection every time we use a device, right? You pump it up and you're going to get to what you need. There's, there's no variability in it. And then most importantly, believe it or not, spontaneous. Rather than planning out you know, having to uh, go to the to the medicine closet and get your Viagra or having to do an injection and waiting, this is ready when you want it. So there is a, um, a little bit more of a natural uh, kind of function to it all. And that's probably the biggest benefit is you can get back to pretty close to where you were before. Okay, we covered the advantages, we covered the benefits. Now let's talk risks. Dr. Natale, what do you want to tell us about risks when it comes to penile implants? I, I tell my penis jokes, right? We we have fun and cut up, but then I get my serious mode as a, as a physician, as your surgeon, as the person who's going to be handling your care. Any surgery, no matter how minor, has some risks to it, whether it be things like bleeding or injury to any adjacent organ or, or whatever the, the case may be. But specifically to implants, I'll tell you the number one thing I counsel my patients on and what I worry about the most and what I work hard and diligently to prevent is implant infection. 
Now, the rate of that's fairly low. It's about a 1% to 2% risk. Um, there are maneuvers that we do to help reduce that risk even further. Um, and certainly, being a, a higher volume doctor and being able to get through the procedure fairly, fairly quickly does help a great deal in that. Um, but that's a risk that, that we worry about. Um, diabetics, uh, men who've had spinal cord injuries, they're a little bit higher risk of developing an implant infection. So we make sure to spend even more attention on those guys to help with infection prevention. Outside of that, um, when you look at the implant, you know, they did studies some years ago looking at the satisfaction rate and the overwhelming majority of patients and their spouses answered that A, they were satisfied with the device, B, they would probably go back and do it again. And of course, then the spouses were happy that, that they're getting fulfilled. And that was, you know, rates of 92 to 95%, but it's not 100%. So there are some patients that aren't as happy with the device, and that's okay. There's different reasons for it. Sometimes it's cumbersome to use, or maybe it's uncomfortable. And there, so there are folks who have that little bit of a disappointment there. But again, the overwhelming majority of folks really are, are very well pleased with it. Um, but those are the things I'll spend a little bit more time reviewing with my patients just to kind of prepare them for surgery. All right. So here's a frequently asked question I'm sure you have received before. And this is if a man asked you, hey, doc, if I have this implant, are people going to know? Are they going to see it? That is a great question. I hear that constantly. So my joke is, again, as I say, listen, if you go to the gym locker room and, you know, you get out of the shower, put your leg up on the, on the bench and maybe show off. Okay, if a urologist is walking by, maybe. Um, but honestly, for the most part, people aren't going to be able to tell. This is all completely concealed underneath the skin. Um, everything appears very, very natural. Um, when the device is pumped as well, it it looks like a normal erect penis. Um, so I'd be hard pressed to imagine that someone would be able to know about it. Now, I will tell you this. There was a question I get also follow up is, well, will they see it in the airport? And the answer is no. Um, when they first had those kind of scanners that were a little bit deeper, they could they could look into uh, into our uh, uh, nether regions. They thought they could, but now that's not an issue. It's not something that's going to set off alarm bells in the airport and all the rest. So you can have it conceal it. No one really knows the difference. So another frequently asked question might be, can the implant be removed? You can. So in men who are dissatisfied with it, or more importantly, have had some sort of issue, let's say there's an infection. Yes, the device can be removed. The biggest concern we have is when, a, particularly when a patient says, you know, I'm frustrated with this device, just take it out, I'm done with it. We really spend some time counseling them on alternatives because once the device is removed, if we don't give them some sort of implant back, uh, whether it's another three-piece prosthesis or some of the other styles that are implanted, they're not going to be able to get back to their normal erections. Now, again, remember, mostly the guys who are here are having struggles to begin with that are pretty significant. But um, we will not be able to get them back to even where they started once the surgeries happen. So devices can be removed. Um, we just take caution with the reason why we remove them. Are penile implants painful? In the beginning, I will tell folks that, yeah, it's, they're sore, you're uncomfortable. Uh, now, everybody's different. Uh, I've seen guys who, you know, sail through it and don't even blink an eye and other folks who are more sore than that. Um, but certainly in the, in the beginning of it all, you're going to have some, some soreness, some tenderness, but as time moves on, um, and I mean, in the next several weeks after the operation that begins to, you know, definitely relent. Um, the next real big thing is getting to use the implant, actually pumping it. And in the beginning, you're going to have some challenges, but over time, your body becomes completely accustomed to it. it. It forms kind of a callus or a scar around the implant. So you don't necessarily have that same sensitivity you once did. Um, so overwhelmingly, once patients have gone through the healing process, they don't have any discomfort. All right. So with a penile implant, Dr. Natalie, will there be any loss of sensation during sex? That's a great question. I get that very frequently. The general answer is no. 
The um, reason I say that is that when we operate on placing the implant, whether we come from above or below of the penis, which are two different surgical approaches, we take care to either avoid the nerves altogether or that provide us the sensation or certainly identify them and stay far away from them. Um, so we should not run into any issue in that regards. Now, with that being said, there is a trial of getting used to it. And for some men, um, they have to understand that it's your body accommodating or accustomed, becoming accustomed to a new way of, of being. With that being said, uh, once you've gone again through the healing process, you kind of get used to it. The answer is no, we're not messing with the nerves. We're not, we're not making you have any sort of kind of numbness to that area. Um, and you should be able to get back to, to where you were before. All right. Well, I think that's all I got for you. However, I do want to ask, are there any frequently asked questions about penile implants that you get that we haven't covered today? You know what? I This is the one I get a good number of times. And that is people confuse implants in the penis with implants in the breast. And they'll think that there is an aesthetic value to it, that we're going to get things bigger. So my joke is always this. I always tell men, I said, if I could make it bigger, um, I'd probably be a billionaire. And I certainly would have an ice pack on my lap because mine would be operated on at least one time. Um, it, I wish we could. I wish we could make it bigger. That's not what, unfortunately, what implants do. Implants are completely about restoring function. So uh, that's a question I get a good amount. Uh, now, if there's anybody out there in the internet world who says, you know, I have an answer to how to make it bigger, please call me because I would like to be a billionaire. Um, unfortunately, we can't make it any bigger. We are given what we're given and that's all we can do is make sure it works again. That's probably the biggest one I hear and, um, you know, a good way to tell a joke. And honestly, it made me think insurance. Is this covered typically by insurance? Yeah, that's a great segue, actually. You know, because I know, again, using that breast implant thing and, you know, breast implants, they oftentimes may not be, right? Um, with penile implants, from a insurance perspective, Medicare covers it, okay? So the Medicare, Medicare Advantage plans, they'll cover them. A Medicaid, it might be a state-by-state -state issue, but likely won't. And then private insurance like Blue Cross or Signal, the rest, although there are certain insurance plan stipulations or employer stipulations about it, by and large, they're going to be covered. Um, with that being said, my office, well, we'd never, we'd never schedule you operate on you and then drop the bomb on you that, oops, we didn't, we didn't get coverage. Um, we work um, together with um, even the company that, that provides us the implant and working and checking a patient's benefit and giving them uh you know, knowledge ahead of time, what their out-of-pocket expense would be and whether or not insurance covers it. So long answer to, to a quick question, but yeah, it, it is covered for the most part. Great. Thank you for covering these frequently asked questions for us today. Dr. Richard Natali with Carolina Urology Partners, a urology practice in the Charlotte, North Carolina region. Thank you again, Dr. Natali, for joining us today. You got it.